The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Alongside Carson Newman baseball coach Tom Griffin, I'm Michael Watchering, and this is CNEagles.com. The Carson Newman baseball team unveils their 2015 schedule. And coach, what sticks out to you about this, uh, this year's slate? Well, uh, the first one that sticks out, we were just talking about this, is having a conference game the very first weekend. So that's the thing that stands out to us is we've got to come right out of the gates ready to play uh, against a conference opponent. And obviously the, every conference game's a battle, we, we feel like. But to come out against Catawba, who year in and year out seems to be one of the top teams, is uh, certainly an interesting way to come out of the gate. That's the thing that stands out to uh, me more than anything else. We do get to play uh, a lot of the same schools that we've played in the past from your Limestones, Belmont Abbey. Um, but we did add a couple of schools from up north, Cedarville and uh, Notre Dame out of Ohio. We try to attract some teams from up north to come down, uh, mostly to get us some home games because it's difficult to get those. So we were able to get them with those two schools. One of the adages with baseball is the, the hitters are always behind the pitchers. And you mentioned you get conference games right out of the gates and Catawba, great pitching staff over yeah. there. Uh, what's it going to take in the offseason and really the next month to get those hitters prepared uh, for some of these pitchers? That's a great question. I think what we've had to do is in our practices get it as game-like as possible. We're not going to see a lot of live pitching um, in this offseason. And in January, depending on the weather, we may not be able to get outside as much as we'd like to get into scrimmages and game stuff. So what we're going to have to do is in our cage situation is to definitely try to simulate the changes of speeds and the velocity of speeds as much as possible. You mentioned those home games that you're trying to have. Uh, it, one of the things that I, I, I know you've mentioned to me that you're going to try to do is get a lot more fans out to the games. You're going to try to get some promotions to try to get them over yeah. there. Uh, what kind of things are you going to try to do, and how, how important is it for people to come out and check out the baseball team? Well, it's difficult, and, and you've been a big help in this and getting us to understand some of the things that we got to try to do. We don't have lights. Students are in class when we start playing and people are working when we're playing. So there is a challenge to get people out to games when you don't have lights and there's not a six o'clock game. But we do want to try to attract some students and fans by getting more information out to them as far as when we're playing, number one. Uh, number two, having some giveaways uh, to attract the students and or people from the uh, community to come out and uh, if time permits to come out there, give them something for coming out, seeing what we do there uh, as a team, how we play, how we go about things, and draw some interest that way as well. One of the things we were talking about is how the schedule kind of lines up. You need to be in a really good spot heading into the final month of the year where you go to Newberry and then go to Wingate, two of the top teams in the conference. Right. Do you think that that's maybe added pressure for the team to come out in some of these home games against the Lenore Ron, a team that you struggled with last year, Tusculum here at home, and then some of the shorter trips at Lincoln Memorial, Mars Hill, Brevard. Does it put any more pressure on your team to try to come out uh, really swinging well early, uh, knowing that you have those road games late in the year? Well, that's dealing with the mental aspect of the game. And, and believe me, since last year, we have discussed and talked about it and worked all fall about our attitudes and the way we're going to view things. And, and as hard as it is, we have really stressed the fact that we can only worry about today. We can't look too far ahead. As a coach and as a sports information director, that's what we do. We look ahead and say, OK, what's going on here? But as a coach and with our players, we have truly said we got to worry about today, prepare as best we can today, don't look too far ahead. Because if the, today goes well, we got to get better tomorrow. If today doesn't go well, we got to get better tomorrow. If we look too far ahead, then I think it'll affect our performance and it'll affect our mental attitude and how we train and how we go about our business. So it is something we've really worked on and we're gonna focus on one day at a time, not try to look too far ahead. The schedule that we've put up is all we're concerned about is our first meeting. That's all we want them to be concerned about. And then after that, we'll look to the next day. One thing that's a positive from my perspective is last year it seemed like you gave away a lot of games, but you were still in the position last week of the year to make the conference tournament. Uh, you got a lot of seniors on this year's group. You got Bo Osmus, an all-conference uh, outfielder, and Quentin Yoakum, a, a guy that really turned it on late. Uh, how do you think the senior leadership is going to uh, really help your team ensure that they do take it one day at a time? 
you you were a great witness to everything last year, and and knowing the game like you do, you saw exactly that it was kind of uh, playing not to lose instead of playing to win. And, and I think our guys understood that. And sometimes it's hard to get out of that trap of going into a game tentative uh, instead of going in and playing what really we feel is our brand of baseball, which is to attack people, put pressure on people. Um, we, we got a little bit more tentative and got more back on our heels and waited for something to happen. You're right. There's a lot of senior leadership here. Uh, I think guys that were very disappointed in the past and have used that, and that's all we can do is using it as a learning experience. Okay, let's take that. Now what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. And so there's certainly going to be roadblocks at the course of the year here, and uh, the key is how we're going to respond to that. And I do think we've responded to adversity every year in a positive way. Uh, that has to go back to our leadership and our upperclassmen. So I feel like they're, they're definitely going to be able to handle that. You have to go through stretches like that. Now, the tough part would be if these were all freshmen. Mm -hmm. That could be a tough thing. But these guys have gone through it. I think they've worked extremely hard and focused on what they need to focus, mm -hmm. control what they can control, try not to do too much, but get back to putting pressure on people and playing the game to win instead of let's hoping not to lose. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Can't wait to see you in the spring, although we won't see you a lot mm -hmm. early. I can't wait to get to see you again. Look forward to a fun year. Thank He's you. Carson Newman, baseball coach, Tom Griffin. I'm Michael Watcher, and this is CNEagles.com.